All right, today's vintage toy is a Roto Robot, and what's uh, unusual about this one, of course, is it has the Hypno Eyes. And uh, we'll talk about some of the repair that was done on this as well. Your basic functions are walk, guns out, rotate, flash, clicking, that kind of good stuff. We'll see how it walks on the surface. It isn't level or smooth. So, the uh, biggest problem in repairing old vintage toys like this, even when they're tin, is because uh, usually two or three other people have already been inside of them. <clears throat> in the case of repairing a roto robot, the first thing you're going to do is remove this whole shoulder cap, and there are supposed to be tabs here and here, and there's also two in the back, and these tabs are already uh, broken off, which means they've been bent more than two times, so I know at least it's been open a couple of times. So uh, once you get the top off, then the next thing you're going to remove is the front, and you can reach down on the inside and straighten out the tabs here and here with a screwdriver on both sides, and then this front part will come off. At that point you're able to see the bulk of the mechanics and what was wrong with this one was the uh, well the motor ran a little sluggish so I knew I was gonna have to put some spray cleaner in the brushes in there and the motor still is a little bit underpowered up but that's about the best I've been able to get it to run yeah it wouldn't rotate <clears throat> and it wouldn't walk but the motor would run so it had two problems at least that we knew of it at the time when it was presented to me it actually ended up having three problems. So first thing I needed to do was to get down in to the mechanics to see what's going on there and, in the re and I also needed to check to see if the reason it wouldn't walk would be underneath this white cap here there is a worm gear which drives the uh, the leg cranks to make it walk and unfortunately in a lot of these they're we call it plastic but I think it's probably nylon anyway they're cracked so let's move the camera so you can see these pictures that I took as I was working on this thing and there you go so this is with that cap off between the legs and right here you can see that there's a crack all the way through that worm gear which allows it to slip on a shaft that runs all the way from side to side which is what makes the legs move and let's see what picture we got next this is a let's too far let's go here <clears throat> so in order to remove this whole lower section this whole lower section here there'll be four tabs that go up into the bottom of the uh, motor gearbox and I don't think we have a picture of that. Yeah, we do right here. See these tab slots? <clears throat> Those four tabs, let's go back, are up in there. And you can reach in. You can reach in with a screwdriver and then needle nose and straighten those tabs up and then remove the whole lower section. And once you have the lower section out, then you can start to work on the problems. First I wanted to find out why the roto wasn't working. Now the spring-loaded part and this lever, there's two gears here actually, uh, advance to cause the the door opening mechanism up above to work. Does that show up in this picture? Yes, here's this lever. It moves this lever over and that lever causes the guns and the doors and everything to open. <clears throat> but once it's traveled as far as it can travel, that locks and this brass sleeve is supposed to be connected solidly to the base part. So once that's locked, then that means the whole body has to rotate because something's got to give. Well, what's happening in this toy was 
that part, and I think I have to go back the other way. Let's just make sure, see where the pictures are. Next project. Actually, where the brass comes through, this is we're now looking up inside, the, the opposite side of where we were just a second ago, was uh, slipping here. And he couldn't really recrimp that without possibly binding up that one gear that has to move free that I just pointed out that had to spring on it. So the best way to do it is to clean things up and solder that to get that secure. So now the roto part would work. And in order to fix the leg linkage, as you can see the problem with how it's designed, glue will, will never last. It might last long for the sell the toy, but it's going to quit. And it is possible in some rare cases to use a super small drill bit, a number 60 or something, and and drill a hole all the way through the gear and the metal and put a little pin in there actually if you're using a really small drill bit once you drill it put the drill bit in and snap it off works like a pin but it's not a very good solution because if the gear continues to split then you have two halves and that's just still going to come off and you still have a problem the best way to repair it is to replace it and fortunately the uh, China uh, toys they're still making Rotomatics, and you can buy them for, for $15 and up, depending on what you want to pay for it. But uh, if you take them apart, you'll find that this axle and the gear have stayed the same, and you can actually then retrofit one of those in there. Unfortunately, the only way you can feed it in is you will have to undo this back axle pin which you would normally have crimps on both sides on the vintage one. So you're going to have to take a Dremel with a small uh, wheel on it and remove the burrs enough to pop the washer and pull the axle because then the legs can come off. And then you'll be able to feed the new axle in and put it back together. One more problem that this toy had, and you should always check, is see how these two feet are level? They should stay level no matter whether they're forward or backward. If one of them is tipped down or tipped up, that means that this linkage rod, you can see the little little pieces of them right there, have, have become bent. And you're going to have to straighten those out. So once you have the legs and those out and everything, look down under the flashlight and make sure there's no bow in it and that it goes from here straight down to the foot. And straighten that out. And then your robot will uh, stand flat and walk right. If there's a even a little bend there, there's a good chance that the uh, uh, ratchets in the rear of the wheels may not make contact and then your your robot's not going to be able to advance and, and walk properly. So, that's basically the repair on the uh, walking gear, the leg linkage, and the roto turn part. And there's no real reason to, for this repair, to remove the whole body side. I'm going to move this back so I can show this stuff easier. This whole body shell. If you're working on the robot and it has some problem where you do need to remove the body shell, just remember first unsolder all the, the wires that go to the switch in the battery pack first. Then you can come in when you have the front off and straighten these tabs on both sides. Just pull the side out and it'll lift away. It'll give you the back, the battery pack, and the switch is a separate one. Then you can get in and see what's going on from the back side. But there's really not much on the back side of interest other than the uh, solder connection for the clicker. Because the motor and everything else is pretty much buried from the front. And once you have this, uh, this front panel off, you're basically going to see about as much as you're going to see. So there you have it. The uh, HypnoEye Roto Robot inside and out.